Hey gang, Scott here. This is going to be the final video in this little micro series I've been doing on this one photo, this one architecture photo, where I've been using multiple tools to do the editing. I did some work in Lightroom, I did some work in On One Effects, and I'm still in On One Effects. And there's one final thing I'm going to do, and it, it, it uh, showcases a, a feature of On One that sometimes gets overlooked. You may have actually used this without knowing it, uh, but it's the, the ability to apply a mask to your entire filter set. So you know, all the filters you've added, even if you've done masks on the individual filters, that sum total you have control over. You can do masks on it. You can do intensity on it. There's there's this global filter stack control that, that, that sometimes gets overlooked. It doesn't always come into play, but I have a situation where I want to leverage it. Here I am back in effect. And if you watched my previous video, you'll see I, I did two adjustments for, for really getting the detail to jump out in this architecture. This is before and this is after. Now these are applied globally. We can tell you that big you know, white box there, that, that mask is applied everywhere. Well, I really want the detail to be most intense here in this kind of brighter area. This is like my primary subject. This is a secondary player. And the rest, it's not like I don't want any detail increase, but I want the most detail increase to be the place I want you to look. You know, our eyes are going to gravitate toward things that are bright, things that are crisp, and I can tap into uh, to the nature of how our brains work by really uh, keeping the intensity of the effect here and having it taper off. So I could go and mask these individually, but there is the controls over the top here. We have opacity, right? This is, this is controlling all of the filters, right? Everything in my filter stack, none, all. I'm going to keep that all the way up there. But then this masking icon right here, I'll click on that. Now I am working on the mask for everything in my stack. I have two things here. If I had 10, it would be 10 things. Uh, and I'm just going to reach for a tool at this point. Get over to my gradient mask. I will choose the edges shape to mask away from the edges. I'll click once and shrink this down. Now you can see that the detail outside of my oval here, you know, is gone, right? So if I do my before and after, backslash key, before and after, you only see the pop in the center. That's great. I like that. I want to make sure I stretch this out a bit so that, uh, or that pin, there we go. So I've got that mask 100% focus there. Let's, um, let me press the O key. You can see here's where my mask is being applied, right? And then it's tapering off. Now the thing is, I want that detail, all that thing we did with the tone enhancer and the dynamic contrast, I also want it in these other areas here. I don't want the mask to be pure black. And how do I go about achieving that? Well, I could reach for a paintbrush and uh, brush it in at like, you know, half opacity or something like that. Uh, but there is a much easier way. It's called the density slider. Um, so uh, the density slider is right here. I'm going to use these overall settings in this masking properties. Yours might be mounted or nested. But here, refine mask. And here's the density slider. I'm going to press the O key one more time so you can see what density does. Density says, hey, all the areas you've masked away, don't mask them at full strength. And I can bring this back to say, you know, here I say, okay, I'm at 60% of a mask. And if I go down to zero, I get a full mask. And somewhere in between here is where I'm going to want to land. I'll turn off the mask view because now I can work visually. You know, no mask whatsoever. We see the detail return in these areas outside in the edges. Completely gone. Somewhere around here, maybe around there. I don't know what the number is. The number is 54. Fine, I'm watching the photo for that. And so now what I have, let's get rid of that and that. What I have for this entire mask before and after, we have a detail pop, but it is most intense here and it tapers off. It doesn't taper off to zero. It tapers off to something like, I guess it was well, 100 minus 54, 46, uh, because I'm using that density slider. So um, this area of the effects stack right in here, often overlooked, 
the opacity slider, you might have actually used that if you've ever applied a preset and in the preset area used a fade slider, that's what this is doing. It's just fading the entire set of your filters. But if you've never used the mask for the effect stack, or if you did use it, maybe you used it by mistake and didn't know what was going on. This is what it does. You're applying a mask to everything. So it's like I took this mask and stuck it on every single one of these filters. Now here again, this is um, a little, uh, as far as the, the masking work, pretty straightforward. But imagine if you had done tailored masks of each one of your individual filters. On top of that, you can do a mask of the entire filter stack. I find it useful when I want to take the sum total, the effective look of a photo, and have that look be most intense in one area and a little less intense in others. So leveraging the filter stack mask plus density, bringing that back from 100 so it tapers off. So you're not removing the effect, but you're just downplaying it in certain areas. Hope you found the video useful. Got questions? Go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.